Magic Box Story Time with me, Lottie. Today, we are going to find out what happens in chapter two of the tale of the pilot and the race. Penelope now has a crew and they are about to get into her wonderful old biplane, Boudica. Chapter two, the lake. The race was about to start. So they all boarded Boudica the biplane. Frankly, it was a bit of a squeeze. Hope you don't mind squashing up, crew, said Penelope. Boudicca wasn't really designed for carrying groups. How, how many of you are there anyway? Jodie had a quick count up. Oh, about 15, she said. Crikey, said Penelope. If there was a prize for biggest crew, I'd win with my eyes closed. <laughs> but you'll keep them open when you're flying, though, won't you? Said Toilet Situation who was a bit of a nervous traveller. Oh, gosh, yes, said Penelope. She settled herself into the cockpit and turned to Jodie. I say, co-pilot, she said. Would you mind awfully getting the compass out of the flight case? Jodie did exactly what she was asked, and it became clear to everyone that she was probably one of the best co-pilots in the whole race. Right, said Penelope. Let's check our position. Now, I just happen to know that rainbow drops have been spotted on the other side of Flibberty Foggerty Wood, which, as you probably know, is famous for the great Flibberty Fog, which falls on it every now and then. I, I didn't know that, actually, said Toilet Situation. Is, is it too late to get off? So I say, let's head there cried Penelope, full of confidence again and ignoring anyone who wasn't. Now, does everyone have their plane noises ready? We won't get off the ground without them. Most of the crew had brought excellent plane noises with them. Toilet situations was a little bit whiny and someone else, who was coming down with a cold, just sat and sniffed loudly. But other than that, the inside of Boudicca positively thrummed with human-made engine noises. Shall we give it a go? Do join in. <laughs> Penelope turned a key, cranked a long metal handle, pulled on something called a throttle and said, keep them going, keep those noises going. Steady, steady and take off. Boudicca's nose lifted from the ground. The rest of the plane followed and they rose smoothly into the air. The crew were thrilled and made oh, ah, sounds as Boudicca soared, glided and banked under Penelope's skillful piloting. Told you she was a beauty, she cried. And she was so happy to be up in the air, she did an enormous loop the loop. Oh, are we there yet? said Toilet Situation, gripping his seat and looking for a sick bag. Soon everyone calmed down, though, and settled into extremely grown-up flight mode. Obeying Penelope's instructions, some of them checked maps and charts, some made sure they had enough fuel, the one with a cold made herself a nice mug of hot lemon and honey, and Toilet Situation decided to double-check the Toilet Situation, which turned out to be not too bad. In fact, it was all going really well until about half past nine, when Penelope suddenly swayed in her seat and said, Whoa! Did anyone feel that? No? Oh, expect it was just a spot of turbulence. Nothing to worry about. Jodie smiled and said, Of course. She didn't actually know what turbulence was, but she knew she was co-pilot, and so she agreed with the pilot and supported her completely. The rest of the crew realised then that she was probably the best co-pilot in the whole of Pepper Slovakia. Toilet situation did know what turbulence was, though. It's when the air outside is unsteady and makes a plane bounce, he said to the one with the cold. The one with the cold wanted to check she'd understood properly, but just as she opened her mouth to speak again, the plane lurched again. Crikey, said Penelope, the air's certainly as choppy round here. 
the one with the cold looked at toilet situation who said told you and then fell to the floor because a there weren't enough seat belts on board and b the plane had lurched yet again and this lurch was the lurchiest yet penelope frowned hmm she said mm, something's not right where's the map co-pilot Jodie handed it to her because by now she was the best co-pilot in the east of the world. Penelope studied the map and then slapped her forehead. Oh, cripes, chaps, she said. Afraid I've been a bit of a dunderhead. Terribly sorry. Should have checked the geography before takeoff because, wouldn't you know it, I completely forgot about the Lake of Monstrous Magnets. The, the what? cried someone who'd forgotten to do their yoga breaths that morning. Magnets? said Toilet Situation. You mean those things that pull on anything made of metal? Like planes? And these ones are monstrous, said the one with the cold, who could feel a thumping headache coming on. Clever crew, said Penelope. You're bang on the money. We're flying over the lake of monstrous magnets right now, and it's pulling our metal plane all over the place. Poor Boudicar. She's not strong enough to resist. If we're not careful, we'll all be dragged down into the lake. <gasps> but I didn't bring my armbands, cried Yoga Breath. I don't know how to swim through magnets. The plane plunged a few metres and everyone yelped. Oh, drat, cried Penelope. Sorry, crew. There's nothing for it. We'll just have to try and land safely. I, I can see flat ground over there. If we all lean this way... We should be able to beat the pull of the magnets and get past the lake. Try and land safely, said Toilet Situation. Should be able to beat the magnets. Y you mean will, don't you? As in, we, we will land safely and we will beat the magnets, yes? Penelope stared at him for a split second and then grinned. Of course, she said. Yes, yes. Now, come on, chaps. All lean over here. So everybody struggled over to the left-hand side of Boudicca, including the pilot and co-pilot, which was only a little bit worrying. Shouldn't you be flying this thing? said Yoga Breaths to Penelope, who replied, I will, in two ticks, once she's steady again. Boudicca started flying a little more smoothly, and Penelope went back to the pilot's seat and flicked some switches. It's working, crew, she said. Just stay where you are. We're going in the right direction. I'm bringing her down. Everyone stayed still as statues and tried to be as heavy as possible so the monstrous magnets couldn't get them. Gently does it, said Penelope calmly. Gently does it. Come on, old girl. Boudicca sank lower and lower. And, said Penelope, we're down. We've landed. Phew. Phew, said Toilet Situation. I don't want few. I want, there's nothing wrong. Everything's fine. We'll be home before tea time. Not few. Oh, shh, said Jodie. Where's your sense of adventure? And it was only then that Toilet Situation realised he'd left it at home. And that is the end of chapter two. Do join me next time for chapter three and we'll find out exactly where Penelope and her crew, and of course, Boudicca, have actually landed. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this chapter. I do hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye.